everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie. Hi, if you're new here or hey, if you've been around for a little while. So today's video is kind of just fun and mindless because I've been having a rough, rough few couple weeks. My job has just been extremely busy. I've been going through um, tons and tons of like turnover because I've been um, losing cases and getting new ones and it's just been super, super busy. Um, and I've been pretty much working like 12 hour days because I have a lot of clients who, like I said, they're either new and like just such a high intensity or I just have clients that I've been working with that are still at a high intensity. So I just need something mindless. So before I begin, I do want to preface this by saying that um, there probably are videos out here in the world, in the YouTube world that are like this. And I definitely acknowledge that completely. Like, I, I'm not saying that I created this at all. Um, in fact, it was probably back in November at this point, um, three different times <laughs> I tried to film a um, bookshelf challenge that Emma Books created on her channel, which was the history of my bookshelf. Um, I had so many issues trying to film that between, you know, me running out of memory and my like camera not working and then me just getting so upset and not wanting to edit it because I had filmed it so many times. Um, so I scrapped it and I never ended up posting that. But because I've been having such a rough time, I just decided that um, between me and my one friend who kind of just like prompted me to do this again, uh, I am here today doing a bookish scavenger hunt. So my co-writer Caitlin wonderfully sent me some prompts, um, somewhere between 10 and 15 different prompts, and I have to go think on the spot and try to find a book that correlates with that prompt. I have no idea what these prompts are. That panics me because <laughs> I feel like this video could be like 100 hours, me just trying to find where I want a book. But um, needless to say, I'm going to do it because this is just the exact kind of mentality and activity that I need right now in my life. So without further ado, I'm going to pull up on my iPad the list um, that she provided for me and uh, I will leave them down below. So if you guys want to do this bookish scavenger hunt as well, totally go ahead and do it and let me know down below when you do and you post it because I would love, love, love to watch yours. So let's get into it. She's killing me already because I already see that she did 20 instead of 10 to 15. You know, thanks, Caitlin. Nothing like making this harder for me. All right, so number one is my favorite anti hero. And I don't own my Spider Man comics anymore. Ugh. So my favorite anti hero has always been Venom, but I don't own the comics, so I can't use Venom. So now I have to find a different book for an anti hero. Whoa. This is hard, guys, already. <laughs> All right, so this one is super hard, and I don't know. I don't know if it's going to really count, but I think it does. So the Six of Crows duology. Um, I'm going to have to go with Kaz Brecker on this one. Uh, Kaz is one of the main cast of this book, and... He kind of had a very rough history and learned how to kind of play dirty in a city where crime is rampant. So even though he is kind of a hero and he does really well, like, and tries to, you know, do the best at times, he's not always uh, a straightforward hero. He cuts corners, he cheats people, he plays dirty when he needs to in order to make sure that he can stay alive and get ahead of the game. So I would definitely say that this is a good anti-hero pick, um, which like I said, it was kind of hard because I, I feel like you could argue that he is a hero, but I, I do think Lee Bardugo tries to paint him as an anti-hero and I love him for it. All right, so question number two is a book with a world that I would love to live in which is super hard because I feel like there'd be so many books that I want to live in, but oh, I mean, I can go with obvious, right? Oh, do I go with obvious or do I, do I pick something else? All right. We're, we're going to go with obvious. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Harry Potter. Um, I feel like this is just a super obvious one because I grew up with this book. I have always wanted to be like a 
true witch with magical powers, um, being able to cast spells and like summon things <laughs> at will. I always loved this world particularly because I always liked wands and like using wands and I feel like a lot of newer culture magic stories don't use them so I feel like that's lost. So this is just classic. I feel like even though it is in our world, I love being able to think of like that our world could have this touch of magic in it. And I would love to go to Hogwarts or Ilvermorny. I mean, because I'm in the United States. So like, I wouldn't mind going to Ilvermorny as long as I can learn magic. So would love to live there. Oh, question number three is my favorite book besties slash my favorite dynamic duo. Oh, man, I just, I'm trying not to use the same books because I definitely could have used Six of Crows for this one as well. Um, oh, ooh. Okay, so for this one, I'm going to go with the Three Dark Crown series. Um, there's actually a few really good dynamic duo relationships in this. There is um, Brie, Elizabeth, and Mirabella. And then there's also Jules and Arsenault. And Jules and Arsenault might be two of my favorite, like, friends ever because they just have such a great dynamic they've been through it all they've been through really messy situations but they're still best friends at the core and they kind of understand each other when no one else does they have this deep-seated loyalty that you know they have a bond that's almost like sisters and when people try to like tell them that you know maybe they should cut each other off or like do this or do that like they don't and they're always there for each other and I truly love their whole friendship throughout this entire series Question number four is book with the best steamy scene. And I won't lie, I don't read a ton of steamy scene books. And like I could go with a very obvious choice here, but I'm not going to. So instead, I'm going to go with one of the Kindle books that I read, which was Desperate Measures. I mentioned this a while ago. I did um, a wrap up with it. And essentially, it is a twist on Jafar and Jasmine, uh, where they kind of have like a modern love story. And they have this um, like master servant dynamic instead. Uh, I thought the the scenes were very well done um, and definitely steamy. So I would go with that one because that is one that I can actually say that I read and enjoyed what I read. So. Question number five is my a book with my favorite mythological creature. And do I read enough of these books? I'm not sure. <laughs> Okay, so for this choice, I'm going to go with The Vicious Deep by Zareda Cordova. I have not read this book yet, um, and it's a shame because it has my favorite mythological creature, which are mermaids. Um, fairies are a very, very close second, but I read a lot of fairy stories, and I don't really read a lot of mermaid stories, and I really like the gritty ones, which is personally why I also want to write my own mermaid story, because I like the ones that are a little bit grittier and not nice and they're kind of vicious but this one is supposed to actually follow a merman and I have been interested to read a series especially because I really like Zoraida Cordova's newer work so I would like to go read her backlist very much but vicious deep. Okay. Number six is a book with my favorite LGBTQIA plus based character and this is a really good prompt <laughs> um, because I definitely feel like I've been reading more which is great um okay so for this choice i'm gonna go with fury born by la claire grand the particular character that i'm gonna mention is riel riel is one of the timelines that you're following and in it she is just so beautifully and naturally bisexual pansexual um without needing to actually say that on the page um which I know some people argue that like sometimes actually saying it out loud is good representation representation but I feel like in this book it is just so naturally done and that's why it makes me so happy to see this representation in it because like it's just so casual and no one blinks an eye at it and they just accept her for her because they love her and there's just like this very open sexuality and openness to sex as well. I mean, there's talks about, you know, multiple partners and 
threesomes and just things that sometimes are taboo in books, especially young adult books, that is just brought up so naturally. I will argue that this series is definitely new adult if new adult was a true category. Um, so there is much more maturity in this book than there would be in your classic young adults. But personally, one of my favorite series of all time and some of the best representations that I have read from. So question number seven is a book with a my favorite not so happy ending. Um, which, man, um, I probably could argue because I recently have one that's not so happy but it is kind of happy um <laughs> okay so for my favorite not so happy ending I am gonna go with the Hazelwood by Melissa Albert clearly I can't really I don't want to talk too much about the ending because I don't want to give it away and ruin it but um I recently did a review for the sequel and you can learn a little bit more in that review if you want to go check out my January wrap-up but pretty much this isn't like it's not happy, it's not unhappy, but it's very satisfying for me where I feel like things wrapped up enough with leaving some things unopen or left some things open-ended um, and just like I said it was very satisfying even though it wasn't a full happy ending. Question number eight is a book with the best first line. And this is really unfair because I have a bad memory and I don't remember what first lines of books are except for Harry Potter and I already used that so I feel like if I'm going to stick to my guns and not pick up the same book, now I have to think of another first line. So I think I got a good choice and that would be the female of the species. Um, when I was just perusing my bookshelves, I actually remember that I really like this first one because the first line is, this is how I kill someone. Um, like I said, I couldn't remember exactly what it was, but I remember this was a memorable first line and it is so captivating because that it's so powerful with just those simple words of this is how I kill someone and it really, it, it made me want to read the entire book in one sitting, which I almost did. Um, it was a very well done book, very, um, a great dynamic and a great take on rape culture and women and how they kind of deal with the fallout of that. Um, one of my favorite books of all times and it's one of my personalized books and I was so happy because I got to meet the author on tour. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go with this one. So number nine is my favorite twisted tale, AKA my favorite retelling which, ooh, there's so many. I actually love retellings, but I'm gonna go with a good one. I'm gonna pick Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Um, this is about the Queen of Hearts before she became the Queen of Hearts, kind of like her origin story. And this book made me cry. It made me laugh. It made me really hungry. Um, it was a really, really well done book. And I remember this was the first, not this book, obviously, this is a finished, but this was the first book that I ever received an advanced reader copy of back in 2016. Um, I was so excited to get it. I was so pumped. This is like, this was the book that reminded me that like I could be excited for books coming out again. And this is really where I broke into the bookstagram world and the writing world in full. So not only was this one of my favorite retellings, but it just came at like the right time in my life too. So go read it if you, if you love some Alice in Wonderland and you want like a fun, cute, sad retelling. <laughs> Number 10 is my least favorite hero, male hero which is really hard. I feel like more and more I read from female protagonists. So it's definitely interesting to like actually make myself think and, and consider who who's a male and who's the, the hero. <laughs> Okay guys, this is where we get a little controversial. So, least favorite male hero, Resand. Come at me, people. <laughs> but hear me out. So, I picked specifically this book, A Court of Wings and Ruin, because I ended up hating everything about this series by the time I got to this book. Um, the reason that I really hate Resand is because I feel like his arc 
it started off good and it was interesting, but then it just plummeted into this whole, like, I have to be like the best male ever, but by being the best male ever, I have so many flaws that are glaringly problematic. Um, and really it just, like, he just ended up being like, he had to be so correct as a male and that made his character weak. And I, I liked when he was a little bit grittier, like from book one to book two, I really liked him. And I wasn't really happy that Sarah J. Mast completely villainized Tamlin without giving him some merit uh, to how he was, like she did with Resand. But I, I really liked that transformation and how it was more complicated. And he was a little bit more gray. And that, you know, I liked how he had this whole other world and this whole other life. But then he he was too good at that point. So really, he ended up being one of my least favorite characters by book three because I just thought he was so dumb. <laughs> but... You know, I, I probably am going to be the sucker who continues the series either way, but I had to, had to throw this out there. Number 11, which Caitlin knows, because we both have this, this one in common, um, but our favorite found family. I love this trope. Love it so much. And now I use Six of Crows and I can't use that book anymore. So like, shot to the heart. But I think I might have, I think... I have a, another great answer. So this book, the, the one thing that I love about Six of Crows is because it's a found family that you get multiple perspectives from. But I also think, you know, there's tons of books out there that you only get one perspective and there's a great found family aspect. And one of those is Vampire Academy. Um, this book I think has such a great found family because there's like Rose and Lissa are your main two, but Rose's interactions with so many other people like Mason and the other, um, damn fears that she worked like she works and goes to school with plus like her and Dimitri like Christian and like all of these people in this book series come together and love and support each other and help each other even when the stakes are so high and I, I love their dynamics that's one of my favorite things about this series and this might be the next book series that I have to relive again because I haven't read it in so long but I would love to revisit their friendships and their found familiness. Number 12 is book you wanted to throw across the room. Um, I've definitely had a few of those in my time. Unfortunately, I don't think I own it anymore. So I will put a picture up here. Um, but it's another Sarah J. Mass. And I'm going to go with The Assassin's Blade, which is the novella bind up that she wrote um, for the Throne of Glass series. I've mentioned this, I'm pretty sure, in other videos. I just really, really hated that novella bind-up because I felt like you took this character, made her learn these hard lessons in these novella series when she was young, in like 15, 16, 17, and then you make a series. So these are supposed to be when she's younger, and then later in the series, in books like 4, 5, 6, she makes the same mistakes and it bothered me so much. I read the novella bind up between books four and five and it infuriated me with a passion. If you're interested, I will leave my Goodreads review down below um, because I don't really want to get heated up again because I am. I'm getting heated up already. But it was just, I hated that book. I listened to it on audiobook because otherwise I probably would have chucked the book. But at that point, that is when I realized that I did not like the series as much as I wanted to. And I sold all the books. So I can't even, can't even throw it across the room because I no longer own them. <laughs> Number 13, which I feel like Caitlin made this specific prompt for this specific book that I'm going to mention. But it is a book that I read again and saw in a whole new perspective. So Mockingjay by Suzanne Collins. Um, literally just wrapped this up in my January wrap up. So I don't have to rant and rave, but this one from a three star to a five star for me. I really appreciated the depth of the trauma lens and the war lens that was really in this book and the aftermath and the fallout from all of that. I don't think I appreciated it nearly as much when I was 16, 17, because I wanted things to be happy and pretty. And this was a relatively slower book because you're not in the arena anymore. And unfortunately, I just didn't appreciate the craft that was there. But now as I'm older, I'm a therapist and I'm also a, an inspiring to be published author one day. I can appreciate this book so much more and it was so well done. So I definitely encourage you if you were like me and you read it really young and you haven't read the series in a while, give it a pick up again and see if your thoughts change too. 
Number 14 is the best book with a classic hero's journey. Um, so I'm assuming this would be maybe the chosen run trope where you have like person gets a quest, they go on the quest, they do the quest kind of thing. So... I don't have book one, but I have Eldest by Christopher Perioni, and clearly this series, Aragon being the first one, super, super, super classic hero's journey. You have the main protagonist who is, you know, kind of this chosen one, ends up finding the dragon egg and hatches a dragon, and dragons have been, like, extinct for so many years, and then ends up being on a quest very similar to Lord of the Rings, where you have to go to the mines and try to rally the troops and fight against the people who are trying to, you know, storm the land kind of thing. Um, I have yet to continue with this series. I read a good portion. Oh my god, there's a bookmark still in it. There's a dragon bookmark still in it, guys. Um, I read this book, apparently, very, very few pages into it, and then tried to listen to the audiobook for, like, another hundred pages, and it was the worst audiobook I've read. So, all I'm going off of is pretty much the book and a half, maybe a quarter that I've read, but very, very classic. I don't think anyone can argue this if you have any knowledge of this book. Number 15 is Best Villain and Why. So, I guess half of my choices are gone now. Um, also the, the description, I guess. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with it and you guys can fight me. The Darkling from Shadow and Bone. Personally, I always actually argue that I love the Darkling as a villain. I think he is this strange sort of weird alluring figure that knows how to manipulate and is persuasive. He's a very charming character even though he is clearly diabolical and people know to be scared of him. There's an allure to him and he's enough of a charismatic leader that people follow him, whether it's out of fear or charisma, but I do think it's both, which is why I love the dynamic with him and Alina, where she is kind of drawn to him, but knows that she shouldn't be. Now, I am not a person who ships Alina in the Darkling. I don't. I don't think that is what the intent... I mean, there's probably, there maybe there was some author intent there, but I don't read it in that light. I read it that there is a figure who is powerful. He is alluring. He has a similar type of magic to her. And as the saying goes, like, calls to like. And there's that interesting power dynamic where she is kind of in a position to be taken advantage of because of someone like the Darkling. And I love that creepy dark scenario that it creates. Um, I don't think, like I said, I don't think they should have been romantic. I'm glad that they weren't, but I love that there's just that touch of a maybe, that pull in his direction that kind of keeps her second guessing this entire series. So number 16 is a book from an author I met. And honestly, I have like a ton of choices for this one. It makes me so excited. Uh, let's see. Okay, I couldn't find the actual book that I have signed for some reason, but um, I'm gonna go with The Countdown City, which is book two and The Last Policeman by Ben H. Winters. I have The Last Policeman signed. I just have no idea where I put it, and I'm probably just missing it because I'm going fast and I don't want my battery to die again or something stupid. But I met Ben, and this is why I ended up buying this book, as well as I hauled another one of his books, Golden State, because... Once I meet authors, I just want to support and buy all of their works because that's who I am as a person. So I probably, I could have went with Zoraida Cordova again. Um, I've met Libba Bray. Technically, I've met Sarah J. Mass, even though I wasn't, um, I didn't get anything signed from her that day. I've definitely met other authors and I just blink because I panic. <laughs> um, and I've also, uh, technically, I could have used my professor because the professor that I had in college one of them, anyway, wrote a book. I have that book, too. So technically, I even took a class from her. But gonna go with this one, short and sweet. He was a super new, nice dude, and I'm happy that he's still writing. So question number 17. We're almost done, guys. But 17 is book with the best lore. And um, I, I, there's a few that I like, but I'm gonna pick this one. So I'm gonna go with Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Naomi Novik. <laughs> um, this is... Uh, technically, I don't know if it's actually supposed to be like a retelling, but it's definitely based on fairy tales. And I love the lore of like how the woods are kind of like their own menacing factor. I love the, the magic system in this and how they use magic to try to fight the woods, but like the woods is kind of like 
overpowering them. And I just really like the fairy tale aspect. It's just, it's very whimsical. The writing is very reminiscent of like a groom fairy tale. And it's just, I just, I like it. I like it a lot. What can I say? Number 18 is a character I would like to kick in the shin. This is a fun question. <laughs> and my kicker, sir. Okay, so I've definitely had my fair share of characters that I want to kick. I have used a few of them, or maybe not used the characters, but I've skirted around books that I've talked about that I could have picked characters from. So instead... Let's see. I'm going to have a fun um... Okay, so for this one, in the Cruel Prince series, I'm going to go with Taryn, who is the twin sister of the main character, Jude. Now, personally, I like... Taryn's arc. I think she's an interesting character. I think she is supposed to be unlikable and it's it's a good for me it's a good unlikable but because of that I want to kick her in her shins a lot because I'm like how do you betray your blood and uh, <laughs> a lot of that stuff. So I definitely even though I like her I like her as a character I still would like to kick her in, sh in the shin. If she was in real life I would want to do that for real because she's not a good person and you really, it's hard to root for her, especially in the first two books. Definitely, definitely hard. So, yeah, um, I'd kick her. So, number 19 is a book that I would really want to see as a movie or a TV show. And oh, there's so many, there's so many, because there's so many great stories out there that I think could be amazing brought to life. Um, I can't find it. I must have, I have books all over my house lately anymore, so it must be upstairs or just somewhere that I'm, you know what, I think my mom has it. That makes sense now. It's not in my house because I'm not clicking. So my mom has it, but it's Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. Um, I think this would be a really great movie because I don't think it's, it's, you could definitely make a TV show on out of the world, but I wouldn't mind watching a, ser a movie out of it because it would be one and done. And I think it just would be so lush and beautiful and so intriguing to be a, a movie. Uh, conversely, I would not, I think I wouldn't mind seeing it as an anime either. I think like, I'm thinking of like on Netflix, um, Little Witch Academia, like that style, maybe not the art style, but the way how like it's like so whimsical and witchy and stuff like that, I can see like a good anime out of Sorcery of Thorns as well with like the magical books and like the sorcery and the the monsters and everything. Oh my god, it would be so good. It would be kind of like I think like Little Witch Academia meets Full Metal Alchemist. I just think that would be a beautiful mashup and I think it could happen. Someone go make that an anime now because now I really want Sorcerer of Thorns as an anime. Oh boy, why did I do this to myself? Why did Caitlin do this to me? Blame her, guys. Okay, yeah, that, that's going to be my pick, actually. Scratch the movie, and now I want Sorcerer of Thorns as an anime. Thanks. Oh, crap. Okay, so <laughs> the last question that she has is, grab the first book on your shelf that you see. After you finish this prompt, you have five seconds. What are your thoughts about this book? Shit. Um... I already screwed up. Okay. Of course. So I went to like this side because on this side of me, the left side, there's shelves. And of course, like the middle rack is all my beautiful leather bound. So I grabbed the complete tales of, and poems of Edgar Allan Poe. Um, my thoughts are super simple. I adore Poe. I think his writing was like super um, transcending and trendsetting for the gothic genre. I think without his works, we wouldn't have a lot of the like inspiration that we have, the grim, dark, the creepy, the absurd. We wouldn't have any of that writing, gothic horror. Um, he was definitely one of those people who were at the forefront and well before his time, because clearly he did not really get fame in his actual life. It was post-mortem. So I took a Poe class because I love him so much. Um, I love his short stories. The Tell to Heart is one of my favorite short stories of all time. And... He's just great. I, I absolutely, because of that, because I love him so much, I had to get this book. And like I said, I did, I have read quite a few of his works. I took an entire class on it. I've read on my own. I've read in high school, but I have not read his complete works, but one day I will. We'll get through them. But for now, I get to have this beautiful edition. 
behind me in all my videos forevermore. <laughs> All right, everyone, so there you have it. There is my bookish scavenger hunt, woo! So <laughs> um, I'm really happy that I think this finally worked. I have been checking, I think it filmed everything and I had a lot of fun. I'm so happy that I finally got through this prompt because it's been so long, guys. So this is probably gonna end up being a much longer video than I anticipated because Caitlin was supposed to do 10 to 15 prompts and she gave me 20 and of course, I have to do all 20 because that's who I am as a person. But um, I hope you had fun. I hope you liked the books that I picked and um, feel free to tag yourself in this, I guess. Like I wasn't intending this to be a tag necessarily, but, but um, if you're interested in doing this, you know, feel free to do it and let me know down below. Also feel free to share your thoughts and opinions and any kind of commentary that you have in the comment section and I would love to have a discussion. So uh, thanks so much for watching, everyone, and until next time, I'll see you then. Bye!